Again, God bless you all. May the grace of God's timetable and timing be fulfilled in your life journey. It is near that God will exalt you in the higher place in the name of Jesus Christ. You may say, Amen. As you know, nobody can rewind time so that time is so precious. However, we spend our time unaware of this fact, and later, we will regret the time we passed. That's our life. My identity, your identity, the definition of who I am, who you are, is decided by how we spend our limited time in reserve. Who we are today is actually the product of how we spend our time in the past. And how we spend our time right now will determine our future. This is unstoppable flow of time. Nobody can stop that flowing time. It is only wise to spend your time, your first hour, in the morning praying about how you will use your time every single day. That is the wisdom for Christian. At the time, we can say that time is in Greek word hora or chronos. The Greek word is hora and chronos is time flowing, flowing time. But there is another concept of time that is not about flow. It's called timing, a precise moment, in Greek word kairos, time of kairos. So we have the time of chronos and the time of kairos. Time of chronos is flowing time, and time of kairos is a moment, a timing. It refers to point of opportunity and fulfillment. It's not a stream of flow, but an accumulation of time where granted things occur. It's like a moment of achieving a goal, a victory. It is time, a moment of glory. This is something you can, this is not something you can rush. The time must come. The Bible uses this term, the kairos, the moment, the time, to describe the moment when God's will and his providence is fulfilled. For example, when the fullness of time, when the fullness of time come, the Lord God sent his only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, for our salvation, according to Galatians chapter 4, verse 4. Or in his time, Jesus will come again, the second coming, according to 2 Timothy. And 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 6, 14, and 15. This time, we can say, is the ascender of God, the timing of God, his timetable. Our faith is about believing that God's will and his plan will always come true in God's timing. This is how Jesus came to this world in his timing, and he will return when the moment arrives in God's agenda. So the same, God's promise, his word, and the promised answer to our prayer in our life journey will be fulfilled when the hour, time is right in God's timetable. That's what he believe in. The Lord is the Heavenly Father who is giving what we need without an inch of an error. And a large part about our faith journey is in many aspects is about waiting for the Father's timing. Timing. His timing. As you know, I personally like to use the phrase the faith journey, life journey, like that, right? Do you remember that? Yeah, I love that word. Because its meaning contains the truth about how we live in the stream of time that flows toward the time of God's will. 
our journey of faith and life is all about filling our time today, the flow towards God's timing, His movement. The Lord is our Heavenly Father who is faithful, honest to all His promises. The Lord is Almighty God who wants to give us the best things in our life journey. We must trust in the Lord, right? At that time, what does it mean? We can say many things, but one of them we cannot miss is trusting His timing. Persevering through the stream until the flow reaches the right moment. That is our faith. Persevering for the right moment of God is a very active and specific practice for our life journey. For those who believe God's will and His plan. So that, today's question is like this. What practice are we supposed to commit as we pursue God's timing, His timetable? That is the message we have to listen to today, according to today's scripture. First of all, rise above your agenda, your timing. Rise above your timing. Persevering for God's timing does not mean living passive and lazy. You are not supposed to live without any plan or work. Or you can say, oh, just going with the flow. You cannot say like that if you are Christian in Jesus Christ. You should definitely make your plans, challenge yourself, and work hard in Jesus Christ. And also, in many cases, your commitment to your agenda can accomplish some great things. That's true. However, remember, when your agenda doesn't align or collide with God's time, you need to rise above your time agenda. Any planning or schedule without God's time is just an empty and worldly calculation. Are you with me? Let's go back to the scripture. Why? Verse 1 says like that to the scripture. After this, Jesus went about in Galilee. He would not go about in Judea, because the Jews were seeking to kill him. Now the Jews' feast of booth was at hand. Uh, as you see, the timeline in today's scripture is already past two uh, <clears throat> Passovers, two Passovers, Passovers twice in the uh, Gospel of John. Time passed like that. In the first Passover, we saw Jesus going to Jerusalem and clear, clearing out the temple uh, of a merchant and showing many signs, many miracles for people. And this made Jesus famous for people and dangerous for the authorities. And through Samaria, he arrived in the Galilee. As you see the map of the Bible, you can see the Judea area in the southern part, and in the middle there is Samaria, and the northern part there is Galilee. Jesus arrived in Galilee, and near the second Passover, Jesus fed 5,000 men with five, five loaves and two fish. And then he revealed the word, uh, the word, the word of truth, God's words. Uh, he, he taught the uh, fundamentality of the faith. And then, as you know, unfortunately, the majority of the disciples left Jesus. Then, about seven months later, the season of Sukkot came near. The last holidays of Judah, Jewish calendar, that is also known the Feast of Booth or Tabernacles. Feast of Booth or P Feast of Tabernacles. The Feast of Tabernacles, otherwise known as the Feast of in gathering, feast of in gathering, it is one of the three main holidays that the Lord commanded Israelite, his people, to uphold in the Old Testament. The three holidays are, as you know, the Passover, and then the Feast of Weeks, you know, the after seven weeks, that is the Feast of Weeks, in other uh, words, the Pentecost, and then Feast of Tabernacles. 
The Feast of Booth is a time where Israelites make a tent out of grasses, living inside it for eight days to remember and appreciate the protection and provision of God. And on, uh, on the last day of this Feast of Tabernacle, the Israelites would take the water from Shiloam and take it to the temple to give thanks to God for all the rains and crops, crops that they receive in the year. It would also be the time where they would remember and pray for the kingdom of God to reign and the spirit of God to be poured over to them. There was also a ceremony of candles in this feast where they would keep the fire burning continuously in the women's court where it is outside of the main, uh, main court of the temple. With such a tradition and culture as a background, Jesus proclaimed that all who is thirsty should come to me. And uh, he identified himself as the light of the world, light of the life. We're going to see that in this chapter and chapter 8. Anyway, Jerusalem was filled with the people who came to worship the Lord in this feast. Usually, the Jerusalem population was about 30 to 40,000, but in this feast, there are two or three million people gathered. Such a scale of gathering happens when uh, diaspora Jews gather from all over the world. At the time, the brothers of Jesus saw this as an opportunity. They believed this was the Kairos, the moment, the time came. So that's why they said to Jesus like that. Look at the verse 3. So his brother said to him, Leave here and go to Judea, that your disciples also may see the works you are doing. For no one works in secret if he ceases to be known openly. If you do these things, show yourself to the world. Now, you may attention. You may notice that the brothers of Jesus didn't say didn't say this out. Uh, it, uh, uh, the Jesus brothers' idea was not incorrect. It is undeniable that if Jesus performed the same miraculous signs that he showed in Galilee during the Feast of Tabernacles in Jerusalem with a such a grand number of population as their witnesses, it would be an accomplishment like no other. However, the remark was also a bit of ridicule or complaint. Their, their talking sounds like mock to Jesus. Anyway, they were implying that if Jesus was doing something so important, he should show himself up for the world to see. And this doesn't sound that bad. It's not bad. That plan sounds good. But the Bible reveals the true intention behind their suggestion. Verse 5 says like that. For not even his brothers believed in him. The brothers of Jesus didn't say this out of faith. We don't have a clear depiction on whether they just wanted to mock Jesus or wanted Jesus to take political power uh, like other disciples. But whatever they were thinking, they didn't speak out of faith. So Jesus replied like this. Verse 6, Jesus said to them, My time, my time has not yet come, but your time is always here. My time, your time. The time of Jesus, the moment in Judah was near, but not yet. Jesus will do what he came to do in the right moment, that is, that is to arise on the cross for his glory. The moment will come, as is written in the chapter 13 in this book, but 
Your time, the timing of opportunity to seek power and success just like the rest of the world is always prepared and ready for them. But Jesus' time is not yet. What the brothers of Jesus suggested is a great plan, actually, but it was not God's plan. It was not God's timing. It was not on Jesus' agenda. It is not his time yet. These things happen. These things happen in our faith life. In faith, we receive the promise from God, right? The Lord promised to answer our prayers. Do you believe that? God always answers our prayers and then find ourselves the perfect moment. Yes, 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 God. This is the time you have to answer. This is a perfect time. We, uh, we will argue before God like that. So we can say like that, this is a perfect time for you to intervene. They will, they will grant the largest profit in my calculation. This is time. This is time. But so many times, the Lord's reply is that my time is not yet. And at this moment, we must rise above my agenda. You must rise above your agenda at the time, your plan, your timetable, and trust his time. Trust in the moment of God. People who follow God's timing are those who rise above their own plan to follow God's timetable. At the time, God will show you how precious your life is. If you forget that, that means you forget your life. You forget about your life. The Bible says like that. Look at the James chapter 4, verse 13 through 15. Come now. Who you, uh, you who say, today or tomorrow we'll go into such and such a, time, such a town and spend a year there and trade and make a profit. Yes, we can make a plan like this, right? Because this is a life, we can make that. But Bible continues to say like that, 14, yet you do not know what tomorrow will bring. What is your life? For you are a mist that appears for a little time and then vanishes. Do you agree? Yes, there is a life. There is a life. We understand that. So, what should we do? Verse 15 says like that. Instead, you ought to say yes. Instead, we must say like this. If the Lord's will, if the Lord wills, we will live and do this or that. That's what we have to confess before God. Because life is the mist, appear a little time and vanish finally. Therefore, we may say, if the Lord, if Lord wills, we will do that or this, we will live. That's what we believe in. That is to confession, to trust his will, his directions. At the time, you must understand, trusting God is waiting for his timing. Accept his timetable. It's very natural for us to make our plan and timetable, but we must also understand our life and God's will. We need the determination to go anywhere and do anything if it's God's will. Do you seek the Lord and his will? If you say amen, or do you have faith in Jesus Christ? If you say amen, because you have faith in God, is to accept the timing of God. Faith in the Lord is to rise above your own agenda, your timing. God's timing is much better than your timing. You agree? Say amen. And number two, be prepared to be hated by the world. The more we uh, persevere for God's moment, Actively, 
filling the time with the faith, the more hate we receive from the world. It's very natural, of course. It's very natural, of course. Don't be surprised. Not the hate we receive by our faults or wrongs. I, I'm not talking about that. But because we persist with the gospel words and reflect the light of Jesus. Look at the verse 7. The world cannot hate you, but it hates me because I testify about that it works are evil. The world wants us to live in our own worldly ways with our own agenda. If we, if we go our own way, if we follow just our agenda, the world will never hate us. When we try to make a plan of our own and with our own definition of success and work hard to achieve this, the world will never hate us. But when we set our eyes on God's timing and movement and follow its light because we want to wait for his timing, the world will hate us because our very act of following God and his timing is reflect the light of Jesus and it reveals the evil, corruption, and vanity of the worldly value and deeds. In fact, before the light of Jesus, everything was the same. Without the light, there was no way to distinguish anything. But when the light of Jesus, his moment and ascent reflect and reveal the people, it shows how vain and pointless their ways of values are. You respect people to enter repentance when you reflect his light. But it's not much. It's not much. There are those who repent, but there are those who hate us. You. Why? Because you reflect his light when you follow his timetable, his timing. Because that is to say, your, this word is evil. This word is in vain. Your timetable, your agenda is wrong. Because you, says, you said to them like that, they hate you. Think about that. If you say somebody who talk about church negatively, hey, our church is so bad. I hate my church. I don't understand why they come to church. By the time you can say like this, hey, 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 my bro, my sister, it's wrong. As you know, there is no perfect church, but there is a healthy church. Think about our worship prayer. Think about the message from the pulpit. Think about prayer time. Our church is a healthy church. Don't make gossip and rumors. The time a brother or sister talk to you back like this, oh, my brother, my sister, thank you so much. I forgot that. You remind me. Thank you so much. Holy Spirit makes you remind me I am wrong. Thank you very much. If you see people like that, don't miss them. Make them your friend. They are great people. But usually, what is their answer? Even though they didn't say to you in your face, they say, they said, say, they say to other people or themselves, who do you think you are? Are you a pastor? Right? If you are hated like that, my brothers and sisters, rejoice. Rejoice. Because that is proof you are not friend of this world, but you are friend of God. Look at the James chapter 4, verse 4. You adulterers, you adulterers, is talking to the church. Don't you realize that friendship with the world makes you an enemy of God? I say it again. If you want to be a friend of the world, 
you make yourself an enemy of God. If somebody who talk negatively about church or the faith at the time they don't hate you, you are friend of them, friend with them. That means you are an enemy of God. Wake up. If you are hated by them, like people, rejoice. Rejoice. Jesus was hated by the world like that. And every believer s are hated from the world like that. If you live obsessed with your own timetable and method while calling yourself a Christian, you are not. If you accept God's timing, the world is going to see His timing. So that, my brothers and sisters, you have to be friend with God, not enemy of God. To embrace and accept the timing of God is to accept the faith to be hated by the world. And number three, Actually, I imagined, I imagined you didn't say amen about this one, but wow, you didn't say amen. I can give you one more opportunity. We have to be, we have to be hated by the world. At the time, rejoice before God. Rejoice. Because there is God's reward. And number three, persevere with your work in Secret. So, when we have determined ourselves and throw, throw away the worldly calculation and agenda, and fully prepare to be hated, the time, what must we do next? Do we stay still? No. We must do our works. Until the time comes, we must persevere with our works. Keep doing what you must do in secret. Let's go back to the scripture, verse 8. You go up to the feast. I'm not going up to this feast, for my time has not yet fully come. You have to see that this feast. Actually, in Greek grammar, this is a chord, uh, a chord word. But it's a very important one. This feast is for Jesus' brothers and other peoples. But this feast, they, this feast that they think this is time is not Jesus' timing. So I don't want to go up to Jerusalem this feast, this feast. The time you, you say this is the timing. I don't want to go this feast. But verse 9, after saying this, he remained in Galilee. And verse 10, but after his brothers had gone up to the feast, then he also went up, not publicly, but in private. In other words, in secret. When they go up to Jerusalem for the feast, they make a caravan. But Jesus didn't join that caravan. Jesus told his brothers to go ahead without going himself. The Lord Jesus stated that his time has not come yet, so he won't be joining for the feast of that caravan. The holiday feast, this holiday feast, the time when everyone expects Jesus to show his presence, is not Jesus' time. But Jesus still went up to Jerusalem. just in private and secret. It's ironic. But I hope you remember chapter 2, the book of John, when Mother Mary told Jesus about the lack of wine during the wedding in Cana. Jesus replied that has nothing to do with him. He said, my time was not yet. He said like that at the time too. But still, he performed a miracle, the sign. Through this sign, the disciples gained their faith. Just the same, the Feast of Tabernacle and what his brothers wanted from Jesus had nothing to do with Jesus' ministry. But still, Jesus went to Judea for his ministry. 
for his ministry. He went for his work to show who is the true master of this holiday. He went in secret for his he went in secret for his ministry to teach the world that Jesus is the light of the world, the light of the life. This is the humility of Jesus Christ. Humility is to do my job in my position correctly and sincerely. That is humility. Jesus didn't follow the time of a man, but the will of a heavenly father, waiting for his movement. And he secretly continued his work in the Father's will. That is to love us. When you read John chapter 13 and verse 1, the Bible says it like this, It was before Passover. And Jesus knew that the time had come for him to leave this world and to return to the Father. Yes, right. This is the time. This is time for Jesus to arise on the cross and have resurrection and ascension and send us his Holy Spirit. This is the time. At the time, the Bible says like that, he had always loved his followers in this world. And he loved them to the very end. That is what Jesus continued to do for his followers. He kept, he kept loving his people at the very end. This is the moment of Jesus, the time of glory in the chapter 13. But what does Jesus do? Yes, that he loves his followers. Even now, until the second coming, discussed in, uh, for, uh, it, it, until the second coming in the God in, in the God in God as God's agenda, Jesus prays for us in heaven at the right side of God's throne. That is what Jesus is doing. Jesus keeps doing until that time. Therefore, like that, just the same, until the movement of God is fulfilled in our life journey, we must do our part in private, in secret. Regardless of whether the world and its people recognize you or not, do your job. Do your work. The one who will recognize and raise you is only the one, the Lord God. He will exalt you in his timing. Remember and trust in his timing. First Peter chapter 5 and 6 says like this, like this. Therefore, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God. Yes, be humble. That means do your job in your position in secret, in private. And then, so that at the proper time, He, God, the Father, may exalt you. Do you believe that? In His timing, in His time, God exalts you. God gives you right answer in right time, proper time. I know you are worried about something. Wow, how could I? How can I wait? How can I wait for his timing? Life is very tough and long. But that's why the first Peter continues to say like that. Verse 7, look at the verse 7. Throw all your worry on him. Because he cares for you. God cares for you while you have a life journey toward his timing. Therefore, don't worry about anything. Just trust his timing and keep doing your work. God going to exalt you. 
Until the day our Lord returns, the second coming, let us do. Let us do what we must work. Until the moment of victory and glory the Father has planned for you and me, my brothers and sisters, let us persevere. Let us be humble as we wait for God to answer our prayers in His timing. Let us do our work. Cast your worries of life on the Lord. He is the God, the Father, who will care for your life and my life. In the right moment, when his time comes, the Lord God will exalt you and me. Let us pray. Our Father God, thank you for giving us a message about your time. We always argue with you, this is right time, this is a perfect time, why don't you answer me right now? Father, forgive us. We want to repent about that, Father God. And from now on, we have decided to wait for your timing. Accept your timetable, your agenda. Therefore, Father God, even though we make many plans in our life journey for our life, for my family, for my business, Father, we want to rise above my agenda, my plan, because we accept your timetable, your agenda. Father God, while we follow your agenda and accept your timetable, we understand this world is going to hate us. We don't want to be surprised, Father God. We want to rejoice at the time because you are with us. You are our friend. And also, Father God, until we get the timing, your timing, we want to do our works in secret. It doesn't matter if somebody knows or not. It doesn't matter, Father God. It matters if you know about that. We want to do our job until that moment, until your time comes in our life journey. Let us see your time. Let us follow your time. Let us wait your time. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen.